very, very important because now research has shown that we had one sign language which we used over the whole continent before Europeans arrived here. You imagine between, say, six and eight hundred languages and dialects. We couldn't learn every language. But interestingly, children, in most of our cases of our clan groups, I'd say probably all of our children, had to learn at least five dialects from around that area. So little children started to learn five languages from the beginning. I mean, when I grew up, uh, my first language was slang English, broken, we call it Murray slang. My second language was Tahitian, because my great-grandmother was bought in the slave trade. Uh, my third language, we had the German Lutheran Church, so at five, das ist weich in Deutsch sprechen, sie sprechen das Preußisch, Hochdeutsch. So we had to learn German. Then my great uncle was Chinese Aboriginal, so Josan, ne homa, chenyong hui, no chayim, sama, long ho. And so we learned. So it's not impossible, it's the oral visual learning. But the sign language, when you could not communicate through the oral language, was used all over Australia. Interestingly, if you're out hunting, you imagine, just visualize, say, 10 warriors. They're out hunting kangaroos or emus or what it may be. One of the warriors a little bit ahead, he sees five kangaroos eating, bending over very quietly and eating. Is he going to yell out to his mates? Hey, brothers, group of kangaroos here, big mob, come on. You think them kangaroos are going to stay? That kangaroo's ear is going to pop up, he's going to sit up and he's going to cut, he's gone. So sign language. And that sign language, silent of course, and the warriors know where they are, how many are there, the whole structure. So sign language became very important. When the Europeans arrived here, we had the troopers, the police. Now, if you've been to France, you look at the gendarmes, the French police. They wear the little hat with a little piece out the front. Well, that's what our troopers used to wear here in Australia, the English troopers. So what did our people do? They didn't sing out, hey, policemen are here, you know, you get shot. So sign language. And they put their hand up to represent the front of the hat. And straight away, we knew it was troopers. Quiet, disappear out of the way. Sign languages were very, very important in that structure. Um, for instance, sign language, well, I was had the privilege of being up at Arakun a few years ago. At that time, the Minister for National Parks was up there talking to our elders and I was invited to sit down and listen. Here's the Minister of National Parks telling our people they want to put land aside to protect it and how to look after the magpie geese and have a road coming in where tourists could come in and look at certain things and how we had to look after the land, the environment. And while he's talking about allocating this land, the elders are sitting there listening and he did not know, I'm sitting there watching, and those nine elders were communicating the whole time with the eye movement, face movement, like this, the hands, the little finger tapping, the thumb down or thumb up. And so they had discussed it with each other all the way through. The minister did not know what was going on. At the end, he said, I know you're going to need a week or so to discuss this. So I'm going to leave you think about this and talk about it. Then we'll come to the decision and what you want to do. And uh, uncle, I won't mention names because he's tapich now, he's passed away. So he said, Mr. Minister, we have already discussed it. And he looked and he says, no, we haven't. He said, yes, we have. He said, all the way through. And I explained to him later the hand movements and the eyes and whatnot. And he just could not believe it. Our people had already made a decision. And what did my uncle say to him? He said, Mr. Minister, where do you come from? Because he denoted a little structure in his accent. He said, oh, I've been in Australia since I was little, but from England. He says, oh, another Englishman telling us how to look after our land. The magpie geese, the waterways all around the Archer River, we have been looking after that for hundreds of years, but you just come in and tell us how we can look after it? I don't think so, Mr. Minister. So our people discussed it. You go to our communities today, even on our own community, my own family, you see a young mother going up. I mean, not a good thing to do. We're playing cards, gambling. We call it cut em cards. And you see that young woman walking up the road. She know where she's going with her card game, you know. And her sister may be in the other house or a cousin, and she sing out and she give a little whistle. And that woman look around, she knows straight away, hi, my sister there. And she go, where are you going? You know, and the woman go, cut them cards, handful of cards. And she go, other words, have you got money? And she go, skint, nothing. No, because she could be 500 yards up the road, wouldn't hear her. But all the signs are saying, so we still use that, we adapt it all the time. We're not a static race of people, we survive.